need to talk about some boundaries. Don't get freaked out. I'm not cutting you off. I still want to be your ACT tutor, but it's time we went over how to find the perimeter. Let's get started by looking at the definition of a perimeter. The perimeter is the distance around a two-dimensional shape or the measurement of the distance around something. Basically, it's the length of a boundary. To find the perimeter, you just have to add up the lengths of all the sides. We'll start by finding the perimeter of simple shapes, like squares and rectangles, and then move on to some of the more complex shapes that you might see on the test. Here's a rectangle with sides that measure 12 and 5 inches. Because opposite sides of rectangles are equal, we know that our other two sides are also 12 and 5. So we can find the perimeter by adding up all four sides. 12 plus 12 plus 5 plus 5. You can also multiply 12 times 2 and add that to 5 times 2. Either way, you get 34. So we can express the formula for perimeter as perimeter equals 2L plus 2W. Squares are even easier since all sides are equal. To find the perimeter, you can just multiply the length of one side by 4. So the perimeter of a square equals 4S. In this example, since we know that one side is 3 and the perimeter is just 4 times the length of a side, we know that the perimeter of this square is 4 times 3, or 12. When we want to find the perimeter of complicated shapes like trapezoids, we can break them down into more manageable shapes like triangles, squares, and rectangles. Let's apply this to an example. In the isosceles trapezoid WXYZ shown below, GF is an altitude and all lengths are given in inches. What is the perimeter of trapezoid WXYZ in inches? As always, we'll begin by underlining the facts, circling the keywords, and then labeling the answer choices. The test makers gave us a picture, but if we move the altitude so that we have a rectangle and two right triangles, we can find our missing information more easily. We know that the top base is 20 and that the bottom base is 20 plus 2x. We just need to figure out what x is. We know that x is the same on both sides because this is an isosceles trapezoid. Because the altitude forms a right triangle with the base, we can set up two triangles, one on either side of the trapezoid, as shown. To solve for x, we just need to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If we plug in for a, b, and c, we get 12 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared, or 144 plus x squared equals 169. We can solve for x by subtracting 144 from both sides to get x squared equals 25 and take the square root of both sides to find that x equals 5. So now we can go back to our trapezoid and label x as 5. Since perimeter is just the sum of all the sides, we can just add all the sides. So our perimeter is just 20 plus 20 plus 5 plus 5 plus 13 plus 13, which is the same thing as 2 times 20 plus 2 times 5, plus 2 times 13, which simplifies to 40 plus 10 plus 26, which is 76, which is choice G on the answer choices. Another type of perimeter problem that you might see is one where you have an irregular shape with lines that all intersect at 90 degree angles. Let's take a look at one, but for this problem, it's your turn to give it a go without me. This is a pause and solve problem. So grab scratch paper and a pencil, and when I say pause, you'll pause this video and work out the problem like it's test day. When you're done, restart the video and we'll go through it together. For the polygon below, the lengths of two sides are not given. Each angle between adjacent sides measures 90 degrees. What is the polygon's perimeter in centimeters? Ready, set, pause. Welcome back! Let's go through this problem together and see if we got the same answer. We'll start by underlining the facts, circling the keywords, and labeling the answer choices. Even though all the lengths aren't given, we can still figure this out by dividing the figure into two rectangles, like this. Because we know that opposite sides of a rectangle are equal, we can divide the side labeled as 20 into two line segments, one that's 4 centimeters long to match its opposite side, and one that's 16 centimeters long. We can then label the side opposite the 16 side as 16 as well. Because we know that the height of the left-hand rectangle is 11, 
we can say that the last side is equal to 11 minus the height of the other rectangle, or 11 minus 6, which is 5. We can add 11 plus 4 plus 5 plus 16 plus 6 plus 16 plus 4 to find our perimeter. We end up with 62, which is choice J. So now you know all about boundaries. Well, at least as far as shapes are concerned. So before you go, let me share a pro tip. Remember that even if you get a really complex perimeter problem, you can always break it down into smaller pieces as shown in the previous example. Now that you've learned about perimeter, make sure you apply your new knowledge by solving some practice problems.